It's a non-park day. You're two adults or more, and you don't know what you want to do. Well, I'm here to help. Here's my video on my top 10 things to do on a non-park day for adults. We all know when we're on vacation, we don't want to be going from the break of dawn to the break of the end of the day. Break of the end of the day. Is that actually a term? Who knows? It's probably something I just made up. Whatever the terms you want to call it, at some point on vacation, we actually want to have a vacation. I don't know how many times on how many forums or boards I've heard, man, I need a vacation from my vacation. So I really want to help you out with that. I have found, I've searched and hunted and thought and come up with 10 things to do for adults on a non-park day to hopefully help you relax and enjoy your vacation just a little bit more. So number one is the monorail crawl. Now, if you don't know what the monorail crawl is, it is where you literally jump on the monorail and you enjoy a drink from the lounge or the restaurants at the different deluxe resorts on the monorail. Some people can add Wilderness Lodge in there, some people don't, so that would be completely up to you. You can keep track either by looking up the lounges online, or you can check Etsy or eBay, and people make little lanyards or little passports that you can use. Make your own. It's all completely up to you. But it's a great way to set, relax, enjoy an adult drink, enjoy some quiet, enjoy some music, great way to spend a non-park day or even a non-park evening. Number two is the culinary tour at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Now, when I was doing research for this video, this is something that I came across and I was like, wow, that is something that Sam would even like because there's free food involved and what guy does not like free food? So what it is, it's a 30 minute tour of Boma and Jico, which are the two restaurants at Animal Kingdom Lodge, and there's some free food samples at the end. Now, considering I have never taken this tour, it's something that we have not done, I don't have a whole lot of information about it, but I will link the best article that I found, which is from Touring Plans, in the description below. The third one is horse-drawn carriage rides. And due to the fact that pricing can change, I won't mention any pricing in the video, but what I will do is I will link it in the description below so that you can contact and find out. Reservations are a great idea because these do fill up quickly. Number five is just enjoy strolling the boardwalk. The boardwalk has a lot to offer. There's entertainment, there's ice cream, there's restaurants, there's a piano bar. Don't be Lena and fall down. <laughs> um, the boardwalk is really slippery when wet. That wood is really slippery. So if it's rained, just kind of be careful of where you step because you could end up like me straight on your backside. And then you end up scaring cast members and that's not fun for either of you. And it's quite embarrassing. Number six is something that I found out from a Facebook group and I had to do some research because I knew I had to add it to this video. Did you know that you can rent a poolside cabana at two resorts at Walt Disney World even if you're not staying there? Those are the Contemporary and the Grand Floridian. Now you have to be an on-property Disney guest to be able to rent those cabanas. Some Yacht and, Be Yacht and Beach Club also do have poolside cabanas, but you do have to be a guest of those two resorts to rent those. Pricing is based on time of year, if you're doing a full day or half day, so I will link in the description below the contact for that so you can find out if that's something that interests you. I think it's really neat. It's something that Sam and I have talked about doing, maybe not on our upcoming trip, but maybe on a future trip. Number seven is a DVC tour. Even if you're not sure you want to buy into DVC, all over the parks are DVC kiosks. And if you even pause to look at a brochure, they will get you and they will contact, they will start getting you and they will want you to take that tour. Hold out though. And here's why. It actually can make financial sense to go on a DVC tour. 
Each person that is on your DVC tour receives three Anytime Fast Passes. You'll receive an ice cream sundae at the end of your tour, and sometimes you'll even be offered a gift card to go on that tour. Because the last time that we stayed on property, which was 2017, we were offered, because we were on property guests, a $150 gift card because we were on property guests to take the tour. If you are an off-property guest, they were offering you $75. So don't register for it online first. I know you can do that. But wait until you're in the parks because in the parks is where you're going to get the most benefit for going on that tour. Now, you may be saying, Lena, I don't plan to buy DVC. Then it com comes completely up to you what you want to do. If it sounds like something that you want to do and you have time in your trip to do it, I still say go and talk to them because it really is interesting to hear about what's going on and they will get, let you tour um, some of the models at the different DVC um, centers that you will be taken to. Sorry, again, allergies. <sighs> <clears throat> are any of you guys allergy sufferers because right now there is something blooming in Kansas and it's making Sam and I absolutely miserable so back to our top 10 our number eight is enjoy a dinner show currently the two dinner shows that are available are spirit Alo aloha and hoop to do musical review you can use the Disney dining plan for these for categories two and three. I believe for the late showing of Hoopty Doo, you can also use it for category one, but that is subject to change. It is a two credit on the dining plan, by the way. I'm really excited because on our 2019, 2020 trip, we will actually be doing the Spirit of Aloha category one, and we will definitely make sure that that's in the upcoming video. So, something else to do for, that would be nice for just adults is go enjoy some bowling in Disney Springs. Um, Splitsville Luxury Lanes is the bowling alley that's in Disney Springs. And enjoy some food, enjoy some bowling, maybe do some shopping or catch a movie. So, really, Disney Springs in itself is something to do on a non-resort day. We have spent hours just wandering around window shopping and... Just enjoying the ambiance. They do have a photo pass studio. If you have Memory Maker and you want to get some more photos, definitely make sure to check out that photo pass studio. It's over by Ghirardelli's. Number 10 is Dine at Victorian Alberts. Something to note about Victoria Alberts, it is a five-star diamond restaurant. There is a dress up with a, there's a dress code and children have to be 10 years of age or older to dine at Victorian Alberts. You don't see a whole lot of children there, which makes it a perfect adults-only venue for dinner. It is a pretty pricey place to eat, but it's great for an anniversary. It's great for a... <coughs> excuse me, engagement, honeymoon, family reunion with just the adults... I will link information to Victorian Alberts um, in the description below. So again, I have some honorable mentions because sometimes 10 just, that's not quite enough. So number 11 is the Census Spa. I mean, who doesn't love being pampered at the spa? I think that's enough said. I'll link to Census and below too. And you know, the last thing is just enjoy the resort entertainment. Maybe it's been a long night before. Maybe you did the Christmas party the night before, Halloween party. Maybe you were there for New Year's Eve. And you just need a day of downtime. Just enjoy the in entertainment and activities at your resort. They're, some of them are paid. Some of them are free. But, you know, it's sometimes it's just nice to be and not have to worry about doing anything else. So that's my top 10 with a couple honorable mentions of things to do on a non-resort day for adults. What do you think? Did I pick some good things? Were there things that I should have put in there? Are there things that I were, you're going, Lena, why would I do that on my non-park day? Or Lena, what is a non-park day? What is wrong with you? Comment below and tell me. I love to hear from you guys. 
So please share with your friends and family. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you know when all of the videos come up. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you.